for wood. Some presume that's cypress. We don't know. It's the only, only time this is used in the Bible. Um, but this ark, it's covered in pitch. What, now, what is pitch? Pitch is what is used to keep it from sinking. It seals the, the wood and the, the outside of it. We don't know what the pitch was made out of, but the ark was covered with pitch. And interestingly, the, the same word for pitch is the same word we have for atonement. The atonement, the covering. Jesus is our atonement. His, he, he covers our sins. And, and he, he, during the time of, of judgment, it is the one that, that covers our sins and protects us. And so the pitch that covered the ark protected it kept it from sinking. Genesis chapter 6, verse 15. Let, let's continue. This is how you are to make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits. Its breadth, 50 cubits. And its height, 30 cubits. Now, how big is a cubit? Well, there's no really precise way. Uh, different cultures had different lengths for a cubit. Some were 18 inches. I think that's kind of the consensus. Some were 17 and the way they determined what a cubit was, they measured from the end of your elbow to the tip of your finger. So I, I thought maybe I should do that. So yesterday in my office, I did this. I got a measuring tape. I measured to right here to the tip of my fingers, and guess how, how long it was? 18 inches exactly. I was amazed. Maybe I'm just average height for a Middle Eastern person. I don't know. Maybe your arms are longer. Maybe they're shorter. I, I was amazed, but 18 inches uh, is one cubit. That would make the ark to be 450, 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet tall. This is an amazing thing. And there was no, there's never been another boat or ship built this big until just a couple hundred years ago. It was truly an amazing thing. And God begins, continues to tell Noah how to build it, make a roof for the ark, and finish it to a cubit above, and set the door of the ark in its side, and make it with lower second and third decks. Now, just something very quickly, your version may say, make a window. Mine says, make a roof. Now, in chapter 8, we'll see that Noah opened a window so that the birds could go in and out. That's a different Hebrew word. The word here in, in Genesis chapter 6, nowhere else in the rest of the Bible is this word used for window. Most of the time it refers to light, noonday. So the, the thinking is, and, and Ken Ham, and he's the expert in these things, I'm not, he writes this, this phrase may refer to a cubit high opening under the roof. And if this is accurate, light could have spilled through the opening to light the ark. So think the ark, think a roof, and one cubit underneath the roof, at, under an overhang, that's how light would come into the ark. In Ken Ham's picture at the, the ark, he has some panels that would open it up all throughout the side of the ark. How, how would they survive for years without light getting in the ark? Light could get in the ark. It could breathe. and They could, they could eventually send out the birds chapter 8 verse 17 for behold i will bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh in which uh, the breath of life under heaven and everything that is on the earth shall die so this is god's role in the storm god brings the flood god does this god judges verse 18 i will establish my covenant with you this is the first time covenants in the bible the first covenant that we have this word, and, and you shall come into the ark, you and your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female of the birds according to their kinds and of the animals according to their kinds, of every creeping thing of, of the ground according to its kind. Two of every sort, sort shall come into you to keep them alive. And also with you every sort of food that is eaten and stored up 
and it shall serve as food for you and for them. No, it's a lot. It's a mouthful. So one quick question. Was there enough room on the ark for all the animals? Yes. And I know you, we all know the answer to that. He, he tells us. Scholars have made this point for ages. He says, bring two of every sort into the ark, keep them alive, male and female, of the birds according to their kinds. So when the animals came to the ark, which was an amazing feat in and of themselves, that God would bring these animals to the ark, God didn't just bring every type of every animal. He brought different kinds of animals. So for you dog lovers, there, there weren't German shepherds on the ark and chihuahuas and English bulldogs and the great dash hounds like we have. There was just one kind of dog. The cats, one type of cat. Dinosaurs, I believe there were dinosaurs on the ark. Types of dinosaurs. But most animals, on average, are the size of a sheep. But if you think about it, what about the large animals? Wouldn't they take up a lot of room? Well, the point is made easily that why would you get a grown animal to put on the ark when you can get a, a, a young animal, right? A, an elephant, why would you get an a elephant that's two tons and just get a, a youth, a male and female, which are small, which would probably be the size of a small horse? We can make the point that that God in his providence, God, God in his wisdom, because he's smarter than we are, right? He, he knows how much room was on this ark, and God would do whatever needed to be done to preserve mankind. Now, how many kinds are there? Answers in Genesis says that there would be 7,000 animals on the ark and 1,400 different kinds. Others have said 35,000. Some say two. I, I don't know. I just know for Noah... This was a big responsibility. Look, look at verse 22. Noah did this, meaning all that we've read before, and he did all that God had commanded him. You know what the word all here means in Hebrew? All. Everything that God commanded him to do, Noah was obedient to God and his word. Imagine the immense labor Years and years and years. They didn't have chainsaws back in the day, church. They didn't have planers for the wood. They, they, didn't, they didn't have ways to cut the wood like, like we do. And imagine the years of labor and building this 450-foot ship, a football field and a half long. Hard work, commitment, faith. What about us? We should do all that God has commanded us, are we? We should work hard. We should remain faithful year after year after year as Noah did. We should remain faithful. I, I know church is hard. I know ministry is hard. But God hasn't promised us a bed of roses while we're walking on this earth. God actually tells us there will be trials and troubles and times of persecution. But when life, ministry, walking with the Lord gets hard, beloved, I want you to think of Noah. He was alone, but for hundreds, hundreds of years, he was committed to God's Word. But we must continue. Let's look at our last point. Noah walked with God and was saved from judgment. Chapter 7, verse 1, Then the Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Take you with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and his mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and his mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the heavens, also male and female, to their offspring alive on the face of the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth forty days and forty nights. And every living thing that I have made, I will blot out from the face of the earth. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of the waters came upon the earth. And Noah and his sons and his wife and 
his son's wives with him went into the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Of clean animals and of animals that are not clean and of birds and of everything that creeps on the ground, two and two, male and female, went onto the ark with Noah as God had commanded Noah. And after seven days, the waters of the flood came upon the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened. So where did the water come from? From above and below. And rain fell upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And on the, the very same day, Noah and his sons, Shem and Ham and Japheth and Noah's wife and the three, three wives of his sons with them entered the ark. They and every beast according to its kind and all the livestock according to their kinds and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth according to its kind and every bird according to its kind and every winged creature. And they went into the ark with Noah to and two of all flesh in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went as God had commanded him. The Lord shut him in. The word for shut in here, shut in means safety, protection, or salvation. The ark is their refuge. Let's read the rest of our chapter. The, the flood continued 40 days in the earth. The waters increased and, and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters prevailed and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed so mightily on the earth that all the high mountains under the whole heaven were covered. The waters prevailed above the mountains, covering them 15, cub 15 cubits high, and all the flesh died that moved on the earth. Birds, livestock, beasts, all swarming creatures that swarm on the earth, and all mankind. And everything on dry land, in whose nostrils was the breath of life, he blotted out every living thing that was on the face of the ground, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens. They were blotted out from the earth, and only Noah was left and those who were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed on the earth a hundred and fifty days. Thank you for your patience. I know that's a lot of scripture to read. So the flood came. Noah and his family entered the ark. God shut them in, and God saved them. First, I want us to notice that this is an act of faith on Noah's part. They didn't simply say, I believe there's an ark. I believe that the ark can save me, but I'm not going to enter into the ark. The same is true for us. Many may say, well, I believe there's a God. I believe that Jesus may save me, but I choose not to enter into a relationship with him. Simply stepping on the ark, which Noah made by God's guidance, was faith, but he entered into the ark, he and his family. But notice that without exception, everything that had breath on the earth was killed. Without, sec without exception, think of the people of the earth, the old and the young. Sad reality, right? The rich and the poor, the brave, the meek, those with great intelligence and those not so smart. They, each and every one, were judged. And if you... Realize that one day we will all stand before God and be judged. And it will not matter if you're rich or poor, beloved, if you're man or woman, a Jew or Gentile, it won't matter how smart you are or if you're not very smart. It won't even matter if you've lived a good life, actually. We all stand before God equally as sinners in need of a Savior. Judgment's coming. As God warned the people, the, the, the people during Noah's day, they were warned. God is warning people even today. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 20 says, Because they formerly did not obey when God's patience 
waited in the days of Noah. God was patient. And while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through water. God was patient as Noah was building this massive ark. The people had an opportunity. They, they heard the, the, the message proclaimed of righteousness, judgments coming. They were warned. Yet only Noah and his family step on the ark. Talk about a tough ministry, right? What pastor, what, what minister would want to go to, a, to a, a church or a ministry where no one comes to faith, where it's just him and his family? But Noah was faithful, beloved. And I tell you this morning, judgment's coming, and you need to get right with the Lord. A sim- central theme of this text is that judgment is coming, but God is merciful God is patient. He's giving us an opportunity to repent and place our faith in Him. But God has also, in regards to this text, made a way of salvation from this judgment. The ark is a type of Christ. Look at the Old Testament of types and anti-types or types and shadows. We see it often pointing to Jesus Christ himself. So as the ark would go through the the judgment, the wrath of God upon the entire world, the, the ark is what saved the people from the judgment of God, the wrath of God. And Christ does the same. When we do, and we all will stand before God, it is only through Christ which we can be saved. This is the only way ark points us to Jesus Christ. I also want you to notice that there's only one door in the ark. There weren't many doors onto this ark. There's one way in this ark. There's only one way to heaven. One door to heaven. For our Sunday school classes who just got through with the Gospel of John, One of the statements of Jesus, Jesus says, I am the door to the sheep. I am the door. The, that's a definitive word. Uh, uh, It's, he's the only one. And Jesus would later say in John 14, 6, I am the way, truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Jesus didn't say, I am a way. And if he said, I am a way, then there would be many ways. But he says, I am the way. And as there is only one way of salvation on the ark, which is to enter through the door, which is also pointing to Jesus Christ, I'm telling you this morning, Jesus Christ is the only way to to be saved. There are no other ways. There's one way to heaven through Jesus Jesus is our atonement. We consider the, the pitch. But I, I just want you to know that you must place your faith in Jesus. As we close, the entire life of the Christian is an act of faith. When the, the gospel is preached, the Spirit draws you to God. Wherever you are, you repent and believe in Jesus Christ, and He will take your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh, and you will be born again. Amen. Praise the Lord. That is an act of faith. What are the next steps? You make that faith public. You let people know. What's the next step? Baptism. What's the next step? Church attendance. Walking with the Lord every day. And each and everything we do, we walk with the Lord and we live lives of faith for God and His glory. So Noah lived a life of faith. I encourage you to do the same. As we close, I'll be in the front. If you need me to pray with you, I'm here for you. These altars are open as we consider the gravity and the destruction of sin and and that God judges sin. Maybe there's sin in your life and, and you need to come and repent of that sin. Maybe you need, you'd love to join this church. I'd, I'd love to pray with you and talk to you more about that. 
want you to know I'm here for you. This invitation is just an opportunity for you to respond. As, as the accompanists come, Lennon.